Welcome to a lesson on polar equations of conic sections. The goals of the video are to determine the type of conic section in polar form and also to graph a conic section in polar form. The graph of a polar equation in either of these two forms is going to be a conic section where the eccentricity is greater than zero and a focus is at the pole. Notice in both cases the numerator is e times d. And our denominator is one plus or minus e cosine theta or one plus or minus e sine theta. Notice if the equation contains cosine theta, we have a vertical directrix at x equals plus or minus d. And if the equation contains sine theta, we have a horizontal directrix at y equals plus or minus d. And then just to review, remember if the eccentricity is between zero and one, we have an ellipse. If it's equal to one, we have a parabola, and if it's greater than one, we have a hyperbola. Let's go ahead and take a look at an animation to reinforce this idea. We didn't mention it, but if eccentricity is equal to zero, we have a circle. Notice when eccentricity is between zero and one, we have an ellipse with a focus at the pole, as we see here. And then when the eccentricity is equal to one, we have a parabola with a focus at the pole. And then when the eccentricity is greater than one, we have a hyperbola with one focus at the pole, as we see here. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. Let's take a closer look at polar equations in both of these forms. Let's first take a look at the equation that has cosine theta in it. Here's r equals two divided by the quantity one plus cosine theta and here is r equals two divided by the quantity one minus cosine theta. The first thing we should notice is that the coefficient of cosine theta in both cases is equal to one, therefore eccentricity is equal to one. The next thing is if eccentricity is equal to one, then in both cases d must equal two. Because these equations contain cosine theta, that means we have a directrix at x equals plus or minus d. So if it's plus cosine theta, we have x equals two is a vertical directrix. And if we have one minus cosine theta, we have a vertical directrix at x equals negative two, as we see here. One more connection we should make is, remember on the unit circle, cosine theta is equal to x. And I use this to remember that if the equation contains cosine theta and it's a parabola, it's going to open along the x-axis. And if it's an ellipse, the major axis will be along the x-axis. And if it's a hyperbola, it'll open in both directions along the x-axis if the equation contains cosine theta. Now let's take a look at the same equations with sine theta. Once again, the eccentricity is equal to one because the coefficient of sine theta is equal to one and then d is equal to two again. But now because the equation contains sine theta, here we have a horizontal directrix y equals positive two and here we have a horizontal directrix y equals negative two. Remember on the unit circle, sine theta is equal to y and I use that to help me remember that if it's a parabola, it will open up or down along the y-axis. If it's an ellipse, the major axis will be along the y-axis. And if it's a hyperbola, it'll open up and down along the y-axis if the equation contains sine theta. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at one of our own examples. A lot of times the equation that we're given is not in the form that we need to gather this important information. Notice we need our denominator to be one plus or minus e cosine theta. The key here is this value here has to be one. It's given to us as two. So what we'll have to do is divide everything on the right side by a positive two. So we'll have eight divided by two all over two divided by two minus two divided by two cosine theta. So this will give us four divided by one minus one cosine theta. So from this form, we can tell that E is equal to one. So we have another parabola. D, however, this time must equal four. 
And then since this equation contains one minus cosine theta in the denominator, we'll have a vertical directrix at x equals negative four. So let's go ahead and take this information onto the next slide and start to graph our equation. So notice I have the simplified form of the equation here. Let's go ahead and sketch our vertical directrix at x equals negative four. The next thing we should remember is the focus is at the pole. So this would be our focus. And then next, since this equation does contain cosine theta, we know that the parabola will open along the x-axis. And since we have the directrix here and the focus here, we know the parabola is going to open in this direction here. So let's just go ahead and make a note of that. Our parabola, when we get done, should look something like this. Now there's a lot to remember about a parabola, but remember that the vertex will be halfway between the focus and the directrix. So we know that our vertex will be right here. And then from here what we can do is find additional points by completing this t-table to make a nice sketch of this graph. But there is one more thing that we can remember to help us. Notice this parabola also has symmetry across the polar axis. So for every one point that we plot, we can actually plot two by reflecting it across the polar axis. Let's go ahead and start to complete our t-table by selecting theta and then determining what r would need to be. Let's start by selecting theta equals zero. Well, cosine zero is equal to one, so notice when theta is equal to zero, we'd have four divided by one minus one, or four divided by zero, so this would be undefined. So if it's undefined at zero radians, let's go ahead and see what r would be at pi radians. Well, the cosine of pi is negative one, so we'd have four divided by one minus negative one. Well, that'll be four divided by two, which is equal to two, and this is actually the vertex of our parabola. So since it's undefined at zero radians, but it is defined at pi radians, let's go ahead and work our way back toward zero radians. So let's pick two pi over three radians, which is equal to 120 degrees. So we'd be over here in the second quadrant with a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle. So the cosine of two pi over three radians is equal to negative one half. So we'd have four divided by one minus negative one half, or four divided by three halves. That's gonna give us eight thirds. So when theta is two pi over three radians, right along here, r is equal to eight thirds. So there's one, two, let's call this eight thirds right here. Now remember it's symmetrical about the polar axis. Well, we have another point over here. Now let's select theta equals pi over two. Well, cosine of pi over two is equal to zero, so we'll have four divided by one, that's equal to four. So that point would be here. And we have a corresponding point in the opposite direction. Let's go ahead and select one more angle. Let's select pi over three radians. Well, the cosine of pi over three is going to be positive one half. So we'll have four divided by one minus one half, which is four divided by one half. That'll give us eight. So when theta is pi over three, here, theta is equal to eight. And again, we have a corresponding point on the other side of the polar axis. right here. And that should be plenty of information to make a nice sketch of this parabola. It would look something like this. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. We'll take a look at an ellipse and a hyperbola in the next video. Thank you for watching.